Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're gonna be, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't do it. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I did it. I just decided to come in with the energy, the terrible YouTube energy. <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? I actually, I took um, most of today off so I actually have way more energy than I normally do. Um, hey. So uh, what I was gonna do today was try out this stuff. This is, will it focus? Yeah. Wax medium. Oh, nice. Thanks, Jordan. I'm really proud of that cover. I think that's one of my best covers. Oh, man, I was so distracted by being a, a chode starting up. I didn't say hi to everybody. Hello, Ma'at. <laughs> Hello, Keith. Hey, Michael. Hey, Pippi. Hey, Jordan. Um, I was taking the day off, Michael, um, just to relax a little bit. I turned in some stuff, and I was waiting for, um, like, I'm doing a, a cover for a licensed uh, book. And so it's got to go to the licensee and get approved and stuff. So I had a little bit of time on my hands, and I was like, you know what? I should just take the day off, because I, I haven't actually even taken a full weekend off in a while. So, um... Yeah, so that's what I did. I just sort of goofed around all day. Thanks. I'm kind of um, kind of excited about this. I've been waiting for this for... Um, I picked this up a little over a week, or Ma picked it up for me, I should say. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm hoping is that this stuff will seal and protect a watercolor painting in a way that... Um, uh, will make me feel less scared about just having them around. Like, I always, um, I don't know, watercolors are just, like, so, um, like, if they get dusty, it's rough to clean up. Um, if they ever get wet, it'll just obliterate the, the painting or whatever. Um, so I'm going to try two different things. I got this Alfred Hitchcock that I did a live stream a while ago, and then... Hey, Math Raptor. It's good to see you. And then I got this Sailor Moon piece that I did a long, long time ago. But this is more, this has got more ink on it. And this is on my regular uh, Strathmore mixed media paper. What's the Alfred Hitchcock one on? The Alfred Hitchcock one is on, um, oh man, now that you say that, I'm not 100% sure. It's either on um, Arche paper, arches, or it's on uh, some of the other good-ish watercolor paper I've tried recently. Yeah. Keith asks a good question. Keith, are you going to seal it and then throw a bunch of, I assume, stuff at it to test its effectiveness? I don't know if I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at it. I think I'm going to, uh, but I will probably squirt a little water on there and see what happens. Um, I know what'll happen though, because I watched enough YouTube videos about it. Hey Mark, how you doing? All right, so this stuff is wax and a solvent to make it softer than just like wax on its own. But they don't have like a real um, they don't really say what's in here. It's like wax. I think it's wax and turpentine. Hey, Stacy. It's good to see you. What does it smell like? It smells like, it smells like wax. Here, I'll, you guys take, can take a sniff. It smells like wax and, and solvents. It doesn't really smell like turpentine. But, um, 
It kind of has like an underlying solvent smell. I think probably once I get it, break the seal on, there's like a sort of a skin on top. And I think once I break that, it might actually um, smell a little more. Let us know if it's stink, like if it, it's, if it might be too stinky for some people. Like fumey. Yeah. just occurred to me I should probably put down some put down some newsprint because this stuff is probably fine on my desk but um, I don't know yet hey Dylan <laughs> yeah it probably smells better than the, than the Dr. Martin's Dylan's Dr. Martin's that yep. those uh, <laughs> Still no like button. Yeah. YouTube's not showing a like button? Just for... Just for Pippi, I think. Huh. Can everybody else see a like button underneath their video? I swear this is not a ploy to get everyone to click the like bucket button, but you should click the like button. Oh, it is very creamy. So the way this is supposed to work is that, oh, it's interesting. So as the solvents like evaporate or whatever, um, the wax should get harder And it is doing a good job of like not picking up the paint at all. Which I was a little bit worried about. Like the YouTube videos I watched said it wasn't it wouldn't do it, but I don't know. I don't trust those. <laughs> you didn't believe them. I didn't. I actually even asked um I have a friend that works at I don't remember what museum Peter works at. But he he works at a museum in Washington DC and um I asked him to ask one of their um, conservators if this stuff was safe. And they said, yeah. So. It should be archival. And there's a lot of people who say that they do this so that they can hang their watercolors without um, without using glass. So I think, I was going to try to sort of buff it out right now, but I think what I want to do is let it dry for just a minute and see what happens. I thought that they said to let it dry for a little bit. Yeah. Well, there's different different people, I don't know, the YouTube stuff I watched, it's like some people did it one way, some people did it another way, and it was never 100%, like there's not like a, it doesn't seem to be a YouTube consensus on how to apply this stuff. Are there directions on the thing? No. <laughs> That's not helpful. 
I don't think. Thin wax medium as desired with odorless mineral spirits and mild heat. Oh, here we go. It contains beeswax, paraffin wax, microcrystalline wax, damar resin, mineral spirits, and other proprietary materials. So it is interestingly, it has added like a little bit of a, it is, there's no way it's going to come across on the screen, but it has added just the tiniest bit of like, um, like it looks like there's a wax coating on it where it's got a slight bit of diffusion on it, kind of. It's interesting. Oh, good, Pippi. <laughs> um, it is a little bit shiny. It is definitely shinier than the paper. I guess, yeah, you can kind of get... There we go. You can kind of see the shine on it. And that shine wasn't there when you... No. Before you applied it? change the saturation at all. Yeah, I really thought it would um, deepen the saturation a little bit more. I should have done a scan just before I did this so that I could compare the two scans and see how it affects. I'm scrolling back on the video and it doesn't, it looks the same to me. Yeah. The colors on the video are not like super yeah. accurate though. Did the paper towel pick up some of the red when you wiped it? No, it didn't. Oh, you know what? Maybe it did just the tiniest bit. It's very hard to tell, but like there's a little bit of a wax area right there and you can almost see it looks like it might have picked up a little bit of red. Hey, E.D. E.D. Oh man, it's good to see you. Yeah, Michael, I don't know. I think that if I buff it, the sheen will come out more. Because once it's like a wax coating, I think um, just buffing it will, just like any wax, will sort of shine it up. Which is like good and bad. Like I think it's, I think it might actually be good. Like if it's a consistent gloss across the whole image usually it helps bring the saturation way way up um, which is almost always a good thing not always but almost always a good thing I think hi comic tropes hey comic tropes <laughs> all right so let's try this so this is the the paper that I use for all my comics pages. This is the Strathmore mixed media paper. Can you go? Can you move it? Oh so yeah. There's no shine? So there's there's no. It's just watercolor on paper, and there's really no glossiness to it at all. Okay, just start waxing up Sailor Moon's face, I guess. Sometimes you just gotta wax. Yeah. This paper is a lot smoother, so I can already, like, 
it's already a little bit harder to tell when I've coated an area. Hello, Philip. Welcome. Hey, Philip. <laughs> Thanks, Kylie Stropes. Hey Chuck. Hey Chuck. Time for day at the spa to get your face wax. <laughs> Never seen this before. The wax protects the art. Yeah, that's exactly it. Comic tropes is it? Um, and I I only learned about this very recently. I didn't know this existed until um, maybe two weeks ago. And then I had to do a bunch of like YouTube research and another stuff to decide if it was something I wanted to try. And this is the debut. Yeah, this is it. This is my trial. I really kind of thought the wax would, like as I worked it in, the wax would sort of start to harden really right away, but it kind of isn't like it seems like it's going to take a while for it to to really cure and harden which might not make for the best YouTube thing but we might end up having to look at it again next week and this I'm trying to cover like the whole piece of paper even the stuff where there is no image just because um, you want to protect the whole thing I, th I guess <laughs> I guess that's why I'm doing this. Keith is asking if heat would, let, would help it dry faster. I don't think it would because I think it would melt the wax. Um, because it's like a... the It's got resins and um, and mineral spirits in there and so the mineral spirits will sort of dry from evaporation but the resins I think will sort of cure over time usually they they cure from exposure to oxygen um, is some, your hair dryer one of the ones that will blow cool? Um, that's a good question I think it no, I think it only does heat, but I think it only does high and low. We need to get you one that does cool, too. Yeah, it actually does not say on if, here. If it doesn't say, then it only does hot. Yeah. Tugboat's asking, is it like a sneeze guard? <laughs> exactly. Huh. Okay. Stacy, Stacy's wondering if it would discolor over time or exposure to sunlight. Um, it shouldn't, Stacy. But that's a really good question. Um, the like I said, I asked, um, I asked my buddy to talk to the conservator at their museum, and they said that no, it should be fine. Um, it's really hard to tell with a lot of contemporary products, like what the, like what it's gonna do in a hundred years. But um, but they said that that yeah, it should be fine. I think I think this is actually, I think this is a new formulation of an old thing, but I don't know for sure. Work some of the wax into your stash. <laughs> <laughs> a little for you, a little for me. Yeah, Keith, it doesn't seem to be bothering the paper stability at, at all. Um, some of the the videos I watched about how to do this, they said that they applied it to the front and the back, but I think they just did that as a um, wanting to protect the whole piece rather than just protect the, the front of it. Um, so, like, if water came from behind, it wouldn't hurt the paper or anything. <laughs> Put the art in a tanning bed. I mean, that's a good idea.
Hey, thanks, Ed. This was part of that. Um, there was a Sailor Moon challenge going around a couple years ago. This was in 2000, so already four years ago, um, where somebody picked a panel from Sailor Moon and asked uh, everyone to draw their own version of it. And then when I needed something to test, I was like, oh, I just found this. This would be perfect. Oh, you did, Math Raptor? If you ever post it again, tag me. I'd love to see it. Okay, this is still pretty soft on there. I'm going to try. I'm going to see what happens. Oh, that's interesting. Hello, Alex. Alex says they found a lot of cool artists through that Sailor Moon challenge. Yeah, Alex, there's a lot of... A lot of those challenges are really fun where people get to share that stuff. It's a great way to find people. Do I have a favorite Hitchcock film? That's a good question. I haven't, like, ever really watched a ton of them. Like, I feel like I've watched... Like, I watched Psycho, but it was so long ago, I barely remember it. Watched the one kind of recently with, um, what's-his-name in a wheelchair, watching out the back window of his apartment. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what that one's called. It was on... Ver um, it was on the Vertigo. Time. I don't think I've seen Vertigo. Rear window is right, Mark. Yeah. And ED. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not like a huge movie buff, I'm finding out. Like, I like movies. I really like, um,. like weirder stuff I think like I love David Lynch movies I like movies like um, like I liked The Lobster and I liked um, Bo is Afraid and The Army and The Army the, it was the same the person that did the same lobster movie did a Never mind. Gone blank. <laughs> this is interesting though. It's picking up some lint and uh -oh. it's getting stuck in the wax. Is that from the paper towel? I think it's from the paper. The, I think it might be from this. I'm going to get better paper to put underneath. Yeah, and I own the comics um, that Corbin illustrated for that, which is really good. Yeah, that's such a great weird movie. Like, I really, I really dig that one. And like, um, man, again, I can't remember the actor's name. The dude from Miami Vice. No, Don Johnson. Don Johnson, being a little kid was pretty great. Killing of a sacred deer. That sounds right up my alley, actually. I don't know why, but just the name of that sounds sounds rad. Men. Yeah, I should. Okay. Should I be writing this down? Yeah, do you want to write them down for me? Yeah. Men 
a creepy movie. I do like him creepy. Return to Blood Farley. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what was that movie we watched? That was like Uncle Peckerwood. Oh. That yeah. was like surprisingly good. Like it seemed like it was going to be really, really bad. And it actually ended up being like a really good movie. For being such like a low budget. Um, like Uncle Peckerhead? Uncle Peckerhead, maybe, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this is like... It feels like waxy and a little bit tacky now. But like what it should do is like if I take a little bit of water and just go bonkers, yeah, it is just like beating right up. Yeah, and it comes right off. Can you see that? And there's no paint coming back up. I think that effectively sealed it. Does the wax feel waxy, comic trope, trope sets? <clears throat> it does feel really waxy. Like my fingers now are sort of like, um, Like, waxy. they feel waxy. Yeah, it's like that kind of, you know, when you drag your finger along something and it wants to stutter. Uh -huh. Like, it has that feeling. This stuff is Dorland's Wax Medium. It's different kinds of wax with resins and mineral spirits. Yeah, and it didn't, I thought it would kick up a smell when I like really dug into it, but it doesn't smell any more than when I started really. Can you smell it from there? I can't. Yeah. And I'm pretty sensitive to smells. Yeah, and my fingers don't smell particularly. I'm not going to ask anyone to smell my finger. How does it taste? <laughs> we'll find out next week. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't eat it. It says if you do, to go to the hospital. Harmful or fatal if swallowed. So I think this is the more challenging of the two pieces. So let's, because, just because the paper was more textured. Let's see. So I will say that it has picked up like it looks dirty. Can, can it, you see how lo dirty the paper looks like right around in here? From here I can see it. And I'm not sure if it's because the wax was dirty or if it's just... It looks like the entire white for me looks dirty until you wipe it with that paper towel and now yeah. it's gone. I think the paper towel has lint in it, which is, I think, where the lint is coming from. Um, I'm going to see. I'm going to try buffing it with a clean glove and see what happens. A lot of people are using the microfiber cloths, but I don't think we have any to try out. Yeah. You know, the other thing is this paper, like both of these paintings have sort of been, oh, and something's coming off my fingers. Like that's definitely, that little bit of schmutz is from my hands, even though my hands look clean. Maybe I need to double, like do both gloves. <clears throat> Hmm. Comic Trips asks, what kind of 
camera are you using? Because the image is so clear. I am using a, what is this guy? It's a Sony. I don't see the model number on there anywhere. It's a Sony mirrorless camera. <clears throat> um, one of their cheaper ones that, well, cheaper is still really expensive, but it, um, it's one that they've actually made for, um, like they sold it as a, a vlogging camera just because it has a flip around screen. <clears throat> Is it over here? No, it doesn't say. <clears throat> On camera, honey, um, I'm not seeing any dirty, it doesn't look dirty and People are saying it, they also can't see the dirtiness. Yeah. So, like, some of the dirtiness, you can kind of see it right here. Is that oh, showing up? I can see that. And that definitely wasn't there when I started. It was like, I think it was my left hand picked up some lint somewhere and then smudged it into the paper. And the same thing right over here. Like... There's some dirty guys right there. But nothing since you put both gloves on. Yeah, but since I put on both gloves, it seems to be working out okay. <clears throat> and in fact, just sort of like burnishing it with my fingers seems to be working pretty good like this. Oh, well, no. The wax is trying to pick up a little bit. Oh. It's interesting. Let me go see if we do have a microfiber cloth. I think maybe what I need to do is actually just stop touching this and <laughs> let it be for a minute. Because it does feel like the, the wax is starting to harden up a little bit. Like probably what I need to do is um, leave it alone for 48 hours or so and let it like really fully cure and then um, try to buff it out just a little bit to even out. Because <clears throat> it is a little bit uneven the glossiness you can see really good right in there like just how uneven that is and I'm not sure if that means I need to apply more or if I can just like I keep saying like buff it out <clears throat> and it's definitely not like <clears throat> excuse me it's definitely not deepening the blacks like I kind of hoped it would like I hoped it would sort of you know make everything rich like if you ever watch Instagram it's really big to um, show applying the varnish to an oil painting and it makes everything look so like rad this is a brand new like glasses cleaning cloth it, mm, I it might it work on it, on it. but one of the things I thought about is you didn't let that one sit for, <clears throat> for a bit did you um, I let it sit for a little bit, because then I pulled out, um, okay. what's his name? So let me try it. Nah. You were just trying yeah. to pick up the dirt? No, I was just trying to see if I could polish it a little bit. Oh, okay. But what it's wanting to do is it feels like it's starting to clump up. I, like I said, I think I need to just like leave it alone for a little while mm -hmm. and see what happens. Like probably I need to come back to it tomorrow. You think let it sit like overnight? <clears throat> yeah, I think so. I think, it, I think it probably needs to sit for a couple days. And I might even try doing like a second layer to it and see. What are you going to do with the dirty spots, Whiteout? <laughs> I don't think there's much I can do to the dirty spots. Um, Tuck the scissors. Yeah, I think that might be the best bet. Well, you know what? Over here, I'm able to just sort of roll them off. Let me see if I can... Yeah. They're rolling off? 
Yeah, I can kind of just roll it off. Kinda, now it seems like, like my glove is a little bit dirty now. That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, I did not expect, did not expect lint to be such a big deal. And you can see, it's still kind of like crappy looking and splotchy. <laughs> <clears throat> a few hours ago, I put a sheet of paper in an old cookie sheet, added water, and put some drops of the pink Dr. Martin's watercolor. The paper looks gorgeous. Oh, like it soaked up, like the paper turned pink, I presume. It adds texture, leave it. I don't know, I got mixed feelings about that. Like, having some texture is cool, but like... It doesn't look like texture as much as like a mistake. <laughs> it doesn't read as particularly intentional. I think your idea about letting it sit for longer is a good one to try. Yeah. And we can get some microfiber cloths too. Yeah, I've even seen people um, some people online were using uh, just like those blue mechanic oh. paper towels because oh. those have less lint. We used to have some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Edie, this looks like somebody was eating french fries while they were working on this thing. Well, it's interesting. I, I don't know if I'm entirely sold on it, to be honest. Like, as a thing to do regularly. To, like, finish off a piece. But, um... I think I gotta let it dry and see. <laughs> Put it in your airbrush. I, don't, I think that would... I think that might be the thing that finally clogs my airbrush permanently, is putting a bunch of this wax through there. Well, mask it off first. Probably best to mask also, it off first. It only goes on the uh, and not on the paper. Yeah, I don't know if that actually like that might go against sort of the purpose of it, which is to like to protect the whole thing. Like people were even protecting the edges yeah. of the paper. Because if I don't go to the edge, then water can actually come in into the paper and then come sideways and then like screw up the watercolor from there. Oh, thanks comic strokes. I like making this show, so it isn't, it's no hardship or anything. Thanks for all the shows you do, by the way. You put a lot more effort into <laughs> your show than I do. Oh, Keith wants to know what the page count is. I don't know if it's yeah. changed. Well, Although I did turn in, last week I turned in 44 pages of a thing. Yeah, I've been, I've been putting in a lot of time. I have not been slacking off, I promise, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been putting in a lot of time on the website and uh, trying to get stuff up for, uh, on the shop. Um, but... My last count uh, is 2,931. 2,931 pages. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's like at least 100 over there right now? I don't know if there's 100. I... There's maybe, maybe 60. Maybe 60? Yeah. All right. I think <laughs> that's a lot of pages to add wax to. That's true. I think we can get to three thousand mm. though. Yeah, I think we probably will hit three thousand before, like, without having to make new pages, just counting them. Yeah. You should monetize this channel, man. I have 
I've actually kind of wanted to monetize it, um, but I can't yet. It won't let me. I don't have enough uh, view hours. But, uh, yeah, like, this is, <laughs> this channel's been funny. Like, it, it grows very, very slowly, but very, very steadily. Like, I have enough subscribers to monetize, but I don't have enough view hours. Um, but it's getting really close. I like the community yeah. we have here. Maybe, maybe this year I'll be able to do that. I wouldn't, like, I don't know. I don't know if I would make enough money off of this channel to for it to be um, a big deal, but um, it would be nice if it, like, paid for itself a little bit. How many view hours do you need? I need, where's my phone at? Let me see. <laughs> Tippy says you only have one year to reach it. Yeah, you only have 365 days and I need 680 view hours to, to make the says we only need 3,000 view hours nowadays, Comic Stropes. They changed it kind of recently to make it easier, I think. Um, but it's funny, like, I suspect that once it's, if I can monetize, I think people might see, like, I think YouTube might push it harder. I don't actually know how their algorithm works. So what I need everyone to do is just put on a previous episode in the background and let it run for um, a couple times. Does it, does it matter if the view hours are with the live sessions or do they have to be the... Uh, the live, on watching on. live doesn't actually help with the view hour count. It has okay. to be after, after the stream is over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it hasn't been my highest priority. My highest priority, actually, with this channel has just been to have fun and hang out. And uh, that's been working so far. Hey, Bo. Bo says... Yeah, hit that like button. Bo says <laughs> make a 10-hour ASMR painting video and everyone will sleep with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. I should, like... Um, should come up with some, like super mellow like new agey music to play in the <laughs> background and just draw like mushrooms for four hours or something oh, <laughs> you get audited and they take hours away too Ugh. how what they audit sing for an hour they can barely talk for an hour sometimes <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't have much else to do. I think um, I think the only thing left for these guys is to let them sit for. Could you use the Dorland's wax mm -hmm. to lay it down as a mask, paint over it, and then would it? I could, you know. Up? We'll try it right here. Typo says draw topless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put. Oh, that's too much. I probably shouldn't be using my bare skin for this, but. Oh yeah, it said it was toxic. Well, it said you shouldn't swallow it. Yeah. But I might go to bite my nails in a minute. Oh, good point. Or, or pet the pet the kids. Kids, I mean, Tula and Tibbs. Will you do me a big favor and go fill that up? Yes. You dump it out for preventative. Oh, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't need you to. No, I think okay. I got water in here. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna use a brush that I don't care about too much. That's a good idea. Something nice and bright. Cooper 
Rich says, I was checking out your work in Lonesome Hunters of Mero County. Jeez, man, your visual st storytelling <laughs> is awesome. Thanks, Cooper. The panel to panel story flow is so well done. Thanks. That's like kind of the only thing I care about <laughs> is just getting that panel to panel. I actually have a thing where um, um, I try to make comics that um, people who have never read comics can read. So my stuff, so my stuff never gets like super um, uh, experimental or whatever because I'm just trying to keep clarity i like um the guy er, ernie bushmiller i think said it where he said that he wanted people to look at his nancy strips and be able to read it before they even thought about what they were doing so you would look at it and you would understand it and then you'd be like whoa i didn't even have to like focus on that thing it was so easy to read so that's not quite my goal but kind of kind of my goal I'll keep doing it then. I'll what keep about Patreon or Kofi? Ko <laughs> Ko I've thought about coffee. Well, I've thought about Patreon and coffee both. Um, I actually don't know enough about coffee to know if it would work for me. Um, Patreon sounds like an extra job that I don't have time for. Um, Yeah, I, it's, I've thought about that stuff, but it is like, just like an extra commitment to, to make it work and to grow it. Um, it's not easy. Um, Patreon, I have thought about um, trying to do Patreon for things like um, uh the void without my Instagram story that I was doing. And maybe if, um, if it comes to that, doing that with, um, Lonesome Hunters. But, um, again, it's like, it's just hard. It's an, it's a commitment to people. Keith, Keith, uh, it looks like Keith agrees. Uh, they say, I have a pa Patreon only charge $1 and post every other week. It's oh, still it's still a chore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I can't even, um, I can't even bring myself to do a, a newsletter regularly. It's just so much. I mean, making a comic book takes so much time just by itself, and then trying to do all the extra promotion stuff. Like you really have to be sort of um, just cautious and thoughtful about it. interesting to me when I discuss comics with her is how much of comics grammar is invisible to her and, and so certain aspects of the story don't come through for her oh that's interesting yeah like there's um well you know there's stuff about the comics that um that like Well, you know, it's like, it's the same thing with movies, where it's like, there's a lot of stuff that is intended to be felt a lot more than um, really sort of read and um, sort of consciously processed. Um, I can't give you the specifics about it, but I was pretty proud of um, the book I'm working on right now. I had a scene that took, takes place in a bar, and um, there's a background painting that I... I needed something to just fill up the wall of the bar and I so I found something that was thematic that fit with the bar and fit with the themes of the story and stuff and it's like that sort of stuff is not really intended for someone to see it and go oh oh I understand I get it now but it's sort of intended to um just keep that in the back of your mind of like what this the theme is that's happening Yeah, Mark, it's really, yeah, comics is one of those languages. It's like, I think there's a lot of people that don't realize that um, if you don't read comics, you might not be able to read them without um, some experience doing it, you know? Your dad has a hard time. 
Yeah, my dad has a real hard time reading comics. So this is kind of interesting. So what I did, I smudged some wax on here and then I painted. And you can kind of see it beat it up on the wax, but it did like, it looks like it sort of stained the wax a little bit. You can see sort of this, a little bit of what looks like staining right there. And you can see like here, you can see it beat it up and made these little dots, but also there's like a sort of a general staining in that area too. And then here, where I didn't think there was wax, there's like these little white dots where is some wax that got on there where I rejected the paint. It's a trip. I don't know if there's a good use case for this other than just like a texture, but it looks kind of cool. You, uh, I thought, like as you were doing it, I thought it looked like that uh, invisible character from the family in Harrow County. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always forget her name. Not Mildred, right? I'm looking it up. I bet Mark knows. <laughs> Art of subtlety. We lack it these days. Man, I it's so funny because I don't think um I don't think I'm I don't think I'm being subtle so much as like um like sometimes it feels heavy handed actually where it's like just feeling like every single moment like every single panel I'm trying to like reinforce some sort of theme or idea or character thing or um yeah, it just I feels like you can't be too subtle. Like stuff that you think is subtle ends up being, um, or stuff that you think that you're like shoving it down people's throats end up being um, considered too subtle for a lot of people. My mom had never read any comics except for Calvin and Hobbes until this one day when I was looking back at all the comics that come out over the past year for a multiverse comics piece. Has she been reading a lot of the multiverse stuff? She grabbed my tablet and read the adaption of Zero. Oh, that's so awesome. One of my very best compliments I ever got was um, somebody sent me an email saying that they had gone to visit their grandmother and brought um, the first trade of Harrow County and um, were reading it all weekend. And then their grandma was like, what are you reading? Let me see that. And she read it. And when she got to the end, she was like, where's the next, where's the next book? I got to know what happens. I don't know if she ever got to read the next book, but um, that's one of my most complimentary stories ever. When somebody who doesn't read comics um, gets excited about comics from something I did. I have tubes. Do you want to make huh? an appearance? Nah. Okay. Uh, there's no room on the desk for her. Not on the desk. I can just hold her behind you. Gonna hit the
Mildred was her name. The There's invisible character from Harrow County. Oh, Mark, I think you've posted about, um, is her name Britta Food? Britta Food for Dogs that became a gamer late in life. Yeah, I think you shared a link to her on Instagram or something. She's really fun. And she's getting into comics. That's cool. Just picked up the complete collection of Calvin and Hobbes. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a great. Reading a little Calvin and Hobbes at the end of the day is great. I need to get back on. I've got. I've been buying all those Pogo collection books that Fandagraphics has been putting out, but um, I haven't been keeping up with reading them. I should like make a regular habit of just reading a couple strips every night or something. That'd be really fun. You know what other complete collections are coming out this year? Hmm. Oh, a Harrow oh, County. Harrow County. And, Ooh la la. And Lonesome Hunters this year. Pre-orders are open now. And if you pre-order now and you're a member of Barnes and Nobles, you get 25% off of your pre-order. Today is the last day. Pepe says, I don't I do like that Tyler doesn't completely rehash the story at the beginning of each comic. Yeah, I feel like um, I was actually working on some, I wasn't supposed to work today, but I did do a little bit of work. <laughs> I was actually working on um, some Lonesome Hunter stuff today and was uh, trying to work out how much I needed to rehash previous uh, trades or previous story arcs. It's a hard, it's a balancing act, man. It's hard. Her gateway to comics was Junji Ito. That's awesome. I could actually see how Junji Ito would have like very general appeal. I worked at a hey, comic Kelly. book store over COVID when the first issue of Lonesome Hunters came out. No one ordered it, but I picked up a copy and ended up hyping it up every cut. Oh, thanks, Jordan. That actually means so much to me. Hey, Kelly showed up. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you. Nice. Thanks, Alex. Just got home from a trip to L.A. So glad to be home. Yeah, I saw your stuff on Instagram. That piano seemed um, like an amazing setup. So much natural reverb. Glad that new library edition is coming out. It'll be great to give to a friend. Yeah, I think I'm excited about the library edition. Um, I have my fingers crossed that that'll put it over the um, threshold so we can get the next um, trade going for sure. Your page looks like a trippy little orphan. <laughs> oh, I don't have anything I want to stick in the wax. I was going to draw a little face on there, but I don't think I'm going to. Hey, Dennis, there you are. It's good to see you, man. I hope you're doing good. Nice, Keith. Oh, yeah, library edition is what I'll be consuming. Do not eat the library edition. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think I'm going to um, call it quits for the night. I think this was uh, a good little test of that stuff. Um, we'll probably do an update next week because um, these will be, like, cured by then. They actually feel like, like the wax is getting a little bit harder already. Um, but I think if I give it a day or two, it'll get, like choice Dennis, you say, you yeah oh thanks dude hey i've been loving the stuff you've been posting on uh instagram lately dennis great stuff good to see you <laughs> wax the people you love <laughs> only consensually though please yes <laughs> okay everybody that's it 
We did it. We've made it to another week. Um, I hope that everybody has a great weekend and um, and a great week next week. Um, don't forget to like the video. Um, maybe we could get monetized this year. That would be great. Um, and don't forget to tell the people you love how much you love them. And I love all you guys. All right. Smell you later.